Intro to Computer Graphics, like Lab 10, putting it all together, vectors, rasters, photo editing. There's a lot of planning you need to do before you start. This lab should take a couple of weeks. Now, we're not talking about 40 hours a day, five days a week. But it takes a couple of hours a week and a couple of weeks to get this done. As a demonstration, I'll show you an abbreviated version of some of the tasks be included in your lab 10. My idea is to make a small poster to show off some of the pictures I took when I went to Zurich. Now I know that I'll need to make some shapes. I'll need to add several digital images and make sure I'm using some transparency as I assemble those. I need to make sure I follow copyright laws, use only my material, or have written permission to use other people's material. Key to this is going to be to edit those images. You're trying to improve the images. Make sure you add some text including your name. You're going to save your work as an XCF file if using GIMP or a PSD file if using Photoshop to maintain those layers, transparency, and text. From there, you can export or save as a high-quality printable PNG. Then you're going to save as a web-quality JPEG. But as you're working, keep track of what you're doing in a Word or RTF document. Documentation is a big part of this lab. From the documentation I've given you, you can see an example of what you might do with reminders to record in your documentation those activities as you go. Don't forget there's some bonus work included. Make sure you check your documentation for that. I think I'll start by making a slightly wider canvas. I'll choose my paintbrush tool and make sure I have a fairly decent sized brush. And I'm just going to quickly draw some Alps. Maybe use my line tool, create my horizon. Maybe I'll use my pencil tool, create some snow caps. Now maybe I can use my fill with color tool to make the mountains green, the sky light blue, and maybe add a little brown at the bottom. File, save as. In my 1325 Lab 10 folder, maybe I'll just call this Alps. Now I'll start up Inkscape. Maybe I'd like to make a Swiss flag. I'll choose my rectangular tool. Make sure my fill is red. And don't forget you can use the, the selection tool to select everything and then group those selected objects. Now file, save as. I'll call this Swiss flag and save it as an SVG. Then I'll go ahead and file export as a bitmap and call this Swiss flag PNG as well. In my Lab 10 folder, I've started assembling some of the photographs that I took. But there's my Alps that I made in paint, and there's my Swiss flag PNG. In Inkscape, I'll make a new image. I'd also like to make something that looks sort of like a Swiss army knife. I'll choose my circle or elliptical tool. Again, make sure my fill is red, and draw a rough shape. I'm going to draw another shape that's similar, but this time I'm going to make that a gray. Using my Move tool, I want this to be underneath that down, so it fits behind the red, so it looks like the edge of a pocket knife. Maybe choose my rectangular tool. Let me change that to white. 
move that over to start making my cross. And again, I can move these independently till I get them lined up the way I want. Make sure nothing is selected, and then you can export. I'm going to get now file new. Maybe I'll do 1028 by 760 to give myself a nice large canvas. Let's make this a transparent background. It's a little large, so I'll change my zoom a little bit. Resize some of my windows. File, open. There's Alps. I'll select all, edit, copy, switch back to my new canvas, edit, paste as a new layer. You can see that I've been opening images, copying, and pasting as a new, so I'm getting several in place. Let me turn off the layers so I can show you the individual components that are in place. We start with a picture of my family at Lucerne, my family in one of the glaciers at the top of the Alps, our Swiss flag, our Swiss army knife, my Alps, and a picture of us in front of a schlock up in the Swiss countryside. Again, I need to start rearranging these layers, deciding where I want them. Don't crop any images. Select areas to erase to reveal the transparency. This is the image I want at the bottom, so I pulled it down to the bottom. This is pretty good. That's getting better. That's starting to be interesting. These are the ones that may give me some grief. I may need to right click and choose layer to image size in order to be able to move some of these items around. I've rearranged the layers and hidden all but this one that I'm working on right now. If I right click, I can scale this layer and scale. Starting to become more like what I had envisioned. New layer. Make it transparent. I'll call this my banner. This is at the top of the pile. Use my rectangular selection tool. Use my fill with color tool. And I think black might be interesting for this use. And fill that space with black. Now I'm going to choose the text tool. I want my text to be white. Click right here, type in Collins Family Trip. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is nowhere near finished because I haven't done any editing on the photos. Oh, I certainly don't like that person's leg in there. Now the fun starts. Editing the images, but now I think you get an idea of what you might do to assemble a bunch of images and a bunch of shapes and then demonstrate how you can edit the individual components to make the overall image what you wanted. Don't forget to export as a PNG and as a web-optimized JPEG. And I hope you're taking the time to edit your documentation.